Hey, it's your boy Angie Gavin, and in this video, I want to give you my first 30 days in Amazon FBA Australia. And I want to tell you this now, it's not what it's cracked up to be because I want to debunk some myths and I don't want to scare people away, but it's important to know the truths about, you know, what's the, uh, issues, the challenges that you're going to discover once you start selling on Amazon Australia. And you can watch this video so then you don't have to go through the same things that I just went through. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's head over to my computer and I'll see you in a second. Okay, we're back at my computer and the first point I would say is uh, it's not as uh, easy as these uh, gurus make it out to be. Um, you've seen the films, you've seen the videos, uh, the claim that you can make, you know, this amount of money by X amount or, you know, hey, I just found this $50,000 product within um, 30 seconds of using, you know, a software. Don't believe them. It's just, most of it's just smoking mirrors it's just you know what they're trying to do is they're trying to get you to sell their course there's a whole bunch of steps that has to happen between like even between you know when you research to write all the way up to even when you get to the point of when the product is actually selling and making that type of revenue there's a whole bunch of steps and all those steps that need to be done right even before you even get to the point where you're making that type of revenue so for them to say that hey you can make this yeah, you can make it, but it's most likely that you that you won't make it because you don't, you know, you this is the first time that you're doing those steps and you're probably going to screw up one or many of those steps. Um, so to say that, it's just, uh, it's unrealistic. So don't believe them. Okay, point number two, you need cash to start this uh, business. Um, and some of them are saying you can start with, you know, a couple of thousand dollars. Some of them are saying you can start with $500. I mean, you can... But it's highly unlikely that you're going to get that far because this is a real business. And the thing with uh, Amazon FBA, it's very um, uh, cash flow poor. I mean, uh, it, what, what I mean is you need a lot of capital because you have to buy the inventory first. And when the inventory is obviously, you know, till it gets sold, uh, till it's, you know, actually gets to the warehouse and gets sold, gets sales, then you, you're not turning that money over. And it's, it's, it's like dead money. So... This business does, um, it is cash flow rich and um, you need, uh, you know, the more the merrier. So I would say between 5,000 to 10,000 Australian dollars. I mean, you can do it if you, you know, find a product and you fluke it and you get it and it weighs nothing and, um, you know, you can buy it for a dollar and make $20. But it's highly unlikely because it's very competitive in those markets already. Everyone's looking for those products. So the more the merrier, I'm saying 5,000, 10,000 minimum. You can get away with 5,000. Okay, so point number three, um, there's a huge lag period between when it actually you order the product until you know it goes to sale out on Amazon and then you can actually sell it because your cash flow is tied up and it's not just a matter of just ordering it. I mean, if, it, if it's coming through air or it's coming through ship, um, through C, you know, there's a lag time period. It's generally, you know, a month, month and a half of a time um, they actually produce the product itself, which is like the lead time. Then they have to ship it. Then they have to um, clear it, customs, and then it goes to Amazon. They have to clear it. So, you know, you're looking at about a month and a half, maybe even more. And in that period of time, you know, your cash flow is tied up. So a lot of newbies don't realize that, this process takes a while and you and it can take a month, month and a half, sometimes even two months, even before just getting your product to Amazon. Okay, so point number four. Um, you know, it's it locks up your cash flow, like I just said, but uh, just to reiterate on that, um, it does it does uh, lock up that money. So if you know if you put down five thousand dollars and you spend all your money. You don't have any more money. You you have to you have to sell 
produce or sell those products to 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 get your next shipment and that's where you're going to run into trouble because it's it's such a cash flow um uh it starves you from cash flow this business and most likely that if you order three months worth because you know you need that time period from when they actually make it to when they ship it to to arrives back in your amazon so then you don't run out of stock you know you probably need about two months uh to three months of stock so that means that if you don't have any more money and you your product just starts selling now like you have to already start ordering your next batch or you're going to run out of product very fast and that goes back to being um more more having more money and having the cash flow so um i would say it's the cash flow you need to understand the cash flow issue that you're going to run into all right so so that's a big point for number four point number five um and I made this mistake, don't do multiple things. Just order one product and then rank it and then get it going, making sales and then turn that over because you want that turnover, right? You don't want dead money. So I did multiple products because with multiple products, you have to go through the whole process of um, finding the product. Uh, then you have to, to, to make the packaging. Uh, then you have to then do the listing and then you have to organize the agent uh, if you're using a sea shipping to um, pick up the goods and then it's gonna clear. And if you do multiple things at once, um, you know, this takes a lot of time. It's not just like one product, it's like multiple things. And, and this is the mistake I made. I, I did multiple products at once. Instead of just doing one product at once and then just focus on getting it ranked and getting it, um, making money turning over. So I only do one product at once and don't make the mistake that I did of trying to do multiple products at once. It just gets out of hand very, very quickly. And you find yourself working, you know, 10 hours a day on your computer to make sure that the shipment comes and it's in perfect order and it's, it's every, the specs are right. And there's no issues with the supplier and, you know, the, the, the product is exactly what you ordered. And it, there's a whole bunch of things that you can run into. So don't do multiple products at once. Just do once, learn the process, and then work on your second product or do a uh, different variation of it, okay? That's probably the easiest way. Okay, point number six. Amazon Australia has big restrictions on, um, like, uh, inventory space. And this is one of the things that I ran into. Um, so when you order from a um, supplier, um, the, the, the bigger the, that you order, the, that you order, say, if you order, like, a thousand pieces, you're going to get a better price than if you ordered a hundred pieces. And, um, but then you've got the issue of, uh, the storage space now. So if you're ordering, you know, a thousand pieces, like you're not going to be able to send it directly to Amazon. You're going to have the same issue that I did. And I had ran into this issue, um, in Amazon, uh, USA, like they, they, it's unlimited. So this is the, this is the problem with Amazon Australia logistics wise, because they're just starting out. They've only got two warehouses and they limit what you can send in so what either you have to send it to your home um first and then send uh like 200 units to um the fba warehouse uh but like me i was not in um i'm not in australia so that presented challenges for me so what i did was um, i used a uh, fulfillment intermediary intermediary fulfillment center and I basically sent it to them first, and then, then I gave them instructions to send so many pieces to Amazon. Now, if you do it this way, um, you know you don't have to worry about the logistics side of it, and you don't have to worry about stuff going to your home. But there is extra costs involved, and and if you don't work out your uh, costings in the beginning, or how much the product costs and how much all the shipping that um, that you know is involved in actually getting that product your real cost landed to Amazon, um, you know, you're gonna come, you're gonna, you're gonna get into trouble with uh, cash flow really, really fast. Now you can email Amazon support and get them to increase it. Um, I did get some sales uh, initially when I first started. So I, um, I kind of emailed them, um, you know, just a few days ago and I said, hey, can you increase it? And they increased it to um, 400 and um, uh, 200, sorry. Yeah, 
So you originally you get originally you get three hundred uh, standard, and um, they increase it to four hundred, and you normally get a um, <clears throat> hundred oversize. They double that to two hundred oversize. Okay. Uh, okay. Point number seven. Um, don't take software like don't take the software that you use to do the research on products. Don't take it as gospel because it's not accurate and um, Amazon never gives their sales data away to any third parties. So those softwares like um, Egro, Helium 10, uh, Jungle Scout, um, Amaze Out, they, they just, they're not 100% accurate. Um, and uh, they're just guessing. Now, I had an issue with um, Egro um, because what I started doing was I started using Egro to do my research and find products. And it is a good it is a good tool but what I did was when I got my product in and, and I started making sales I actually went back to eGrow and just did a sales um, pulled up my own sales and see what the software would tell me and the software was inaccurate it was inaccurate by a lot so I emailed in, um, eGrow support and they told me um, that it goes off uh, the sales volume velocity um, the BSR and um, they calculate it through you know various other metrics so they don't actually have the data for themselves they just kind of take an accurate guess and I told them that, that I actually took a screenshot of my sales and I sent them I said you and I took a screenshot of what the software told her and I said to them there's a big discrepancy here uh, and then they gave me this big um, kind of long spiel kind of I think they must copy and paste this 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 response to all people that do that but I still think it's a good software but it's not accurate and if you pull up a item that says hey you know it can make a thumb it's making you know, 500 sales a month it's probably not making 500 sales a month it's probably only making a, you know 50 or 60 sales a month or maybe a hundred sales a month okay because that data is not accurate so don't take it as gospel um, that's a big issue so if you invest you know thousands of dollars into this product that you know based off the sales data that uh, software is giving you can come into big issues because then all of a sudden you get the product there and you start ranking you rank it number one and all of a sudden it's only giving you 50 sales a month when uh, on that keyword when the this, the, the software said it'll just give you 500 sales a month you're going to be really annoyed so number eight, um, use um, when you purchase the product um, and you go through uh, obviously you know Alibaba. Make sure that you use Trade Insure Assurance. Alibaba.com is a leading global B two B online platform where you can purchase directly from manufacturers and distributors from around the world. We protect our buyers with Trade Assurance, which is Alibaba.com's built in order protection you can trust. You can purchase with confidence, knowing trade assurance helps to provide protection in the event that product quality, order quantity, or shipment date vary from what you agreed to with your supplier. Once you finalize a price, obviously, obviously you got to get a, a sample product. Once you finalize a price with them and get you happy um, negotiating some sort of, you know, to get the best deal. Um, just tell the person uh, that you're dealing with that you want to do a trade assurance and, and most of them will. If they don't, then it's like, it's, it's kind of, you know, I, most of them do. There's no reason why I wouldn't. Um, it just seems like they're a bit shady and just move on to the next supplier because if they don't do a trade assurance, there's something to hide. Trade assurance just covers your ass and um, allows you to get a refund if um, they don't deliver what they said. So do a trade assurance on your first shipment at least. Um, at most you won't have an issue with this. Most good, good companies, if they're a gold supplier, they won't have an issue. Just give me your email account to your Alibaba um, address and your phone number, and they can just they'll send the email through, and you'll see uh, trade assurance through, and you'll see it in your account pop up within you know uh, ten or fifteen minutes, and then just go ahead and pay. Um, if you pay through um, direct deposit. Um, just uh, it'll be a little bit cheaper, but if you pay with credit card, um, it, there'll be fees. And negotiate your um, the, your terms as well, whether you want to do FOB or uh, DDP or um, 
you know, whatever. All right, so make sure that's all clearly within the actual contract um, and get them to write it into the notes because that'll, that'll come back and haunt you if they don't, okay? Um, just make sure, if to, to, to summarize that uh, trade assurance, just make sure everything that you discussed is in detail, in explicit detail on the color, on the price of the box, on the size of the box. Um, everything is in explicit detail in the notes section. Um, and then you've got no issues They, you know, you can go back on it and say, Hey, you know, you gave me a, uh, I wanted a color box, um, on the design that I gave you and you only gave me a, uh, brown box, you know, so there'll be issues, um, for them. Number nine, um, get multiple shipping quotes. Um, so then you don't get ripped off. Um, because the shipping agent could, um, like just because they, just because you're using them now, like don't, don't just, and you're comfortable using them, like they, they, they'll, they could be charging you way more. Always use, get multiple quotes. Every shipment that you do, just get like another two or three quotes. Um, just search in Google and look for shipping agent, FBA, Amazon FBA shipping agent, and just um, send the same quote to them. If they come with a better quote, then go back to your shipping agent and say, look, um, I would need a better quote. So point 10, um, if you order DDP, uh, for small items, or like I would order DDP for small items, which is duties, uh, delivered duties paid. And that basically means that you just pay them the one amount and they're going to make sure that it gets to Amazon um, and they're going to pay the fees. Because there's tariffs that will, um, when they get to Amazon Australia, what will happen is um, Amazon will say, hey, okay, we'll accept the item, but there's, there'll be duties and everything paid. And they have to pay that or else Amazon will not accept it. And make sure that in your, um, in your contract that you are the um, consignee, okay? Amazon is not the consignee. So the consignee is just the person that owns the goods, the company that owns the goods. Your name or your company name must be in the consignee. If it's Amazon, Amazon will reject your shipment. So, you know, if you're sending $5,000 worth of um, uh, goods to Amazon uh, USA and they're down as the consignee, um, they will reject your shipment because legally they are down and they have to pay for that shipment, um, the duties on them. That's why they'll reject it. So, I mean, the consignee is pretty much a, a given anyway. The consignee means the owner of the goods. So. Just make sure that your name, your company name is on the owner of the goods. That's all you have to worry about. Um, okay, so, um, and if, if you're doing, um, if you're doing uh, bigger items, um, I would do FOB because you don't want to do um, uh, X works. You don't want to do that EXW because, you know, what happens is, you know, your shipper, your shipping agent, like they can charge you excessively more to get, the goods from the factory to the port and clear it and then you know the shipping costs as well so i would always always get fob um and fob just basically means that the factory is up to them to get it to the port and then once it's at the port then the um the actual shipping agent can then you know process it but the thing is um, it's going to be cheaper for them to do it, to send the goods from China, from, from their warehouse to the nearest Chinese port. Like if it's FOB, Ningbo, like you have to state whether, what it is. Like they, they'll state what it is. Like their nearest port might be Ningbo, Ningbo or could be Shanghai. It'll be FOB, Shanghai or FOB, Ningbo. It just means that they'll get it to that port. So it has to be FOB something, okay? Um, and it's, it'll be cheap for them to get to, get to the port, right? Don't, don't get your agent to pay for the shipping because they're going to rip you off. All right. So just get FOB. It'll only be maybe, I don't know, a 5% more on the price, but you, it's going to be, it's going to be save you a lot of headaches. So get DDP on small items that you can fly in. Obviously it's going to be light and get your FOB on larger items. Okay. Which you will obviously go by C. Okay. So number, uh, point number 11, when you, um, when your product arrives, to Amazon, I mean, you got to stimulate sales because, like, 
you know, it's just, it's just going to sit there and do nothing. It's, it's going to be like, it's going to sit in cyberspace. It's going to sit on the 30th page of Amazon for that, you know, that uh, niche, niche. Of, like if it's a, if it's a, it's on the 30th page, no one's ever going to see it. No one's going to get any sales. You're going to get nothing. So like these people that are saying that, you know, your list, once you list that item, Amazon's going to kind of stimulate the sales. They're not going to stimulate nothing. It's BS. It's up to you to stimulate the sales. So um, they're saying that you have to, you know, wait till you get one review and then you can uh, do PPC. No, just run PPC straight away with no reviews. Get the thing happening. People are still going to buy. It. So what you got to do to stimulate the sales? This is how you stimulate the sales. You lower your price. Like you have it. You have it. You have the price really, really low. So it's like it's a no-brainer for them. You're using PPC to put the product in front of them for the keyword that, that you're uh, nominating or just go for automatic um, campaign first. This is what I did when my products arrived. Just do an automatic campaign and spend like five or ten bucks a day. Stimulate sales immediately because it's just going to be stuck on page 30 and no, you're not going to see any sales. All right, so you've got to do some work to get your product ranked. Start with Amazon PPC and then also do some uh, Facebook ads or Google ads or Bing ads. But do all of them if you, if you, if you want. Um, because the more sales you get, the sales velocity will pick up and you're going to go to page one for that keyword much faster. So the faster you do it, the better, okay? And obviously, assuming that, you know, you've got good, great pictures, you've got a good description, you, it's, or it's optimized organically, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's just a given. Um... So as you can see, there's a lot of steps involved, right? Don't believe these people that are saying you're going to make all this money. There's a lot of steps that have to happen. Um, point 12, I would say um, this is a real business and it occurs real costs. Um, so make sure that you record everything. Um, the, the GSC that you pay on the items coming in, um, claim that back. Um, make sure everything is in uh, perspective and everything's down um, in order. So keep all your receipts, keep all your... Um, uh, Proformer invoices, and then just get someone like a bookkeeper to then match everything up. Um, you can do it in software, but um, I'm just going to get someone to just do it all for me, and then they will just match up, uh, correspond the 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 um, expenses um, that are paid for the goods, and then all the other different things like softwares and all that sort of stuff. Then you reckon get someone to reconcile it all, like a book, book, online bookkeeper. And, and then once you, you know, lodge your tax return or you know, bring that information to the ATO, then they can figure out um, how much you spent and how much you uh, pay, how much you pay in tax on your um, net, net income. So it, all this, this has to be done. I mean, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to get someone to do it with, uh, that has experience in it. Okay. So that's another cost. That, again, that's another cost that you'll incur is like a bookkeeper. Okay. A bookkeeper will get make sure everything's in order before it goes to the accountant, and then you have to spend, pay something like pay an account. So those those things, it's like a real business. This is a real business, guys. Okay, treat it like a real business. It's going to be real costs involved, many costs involved in this business actually. Um, and point thirteen, this is what I discovered. Patience is a virtue. Like this whole this whole process, like to get to my first thirty days on Amazon. This started months and months prior. You know, I, I kind of took like two months just to do product research, okay? And then another two to three months just to order the goods. And then now it's like my first, so it's been like six months um, from when I first like picked the product to when it arrived or kind of researched the product to when it actually arrived and then started making sales. So this is a whole process. It takes time. You have to be patient and um, it just doesn't happen overnight, okay? So the sooner that you uh, put the work in now um, to get the product ranked and getting sales, the better off it is because you're going to have a whole bunch of uh, challenges ahead of you. Um, so, in, you know, it is a real business not to get rich quick, all right? Thanks for sticking with me this long. Um, so that is my first 30 days in Amazon Australia. Uh, it's been a um, huge journey. Uh, it's taken me six months to get to this point. So 
I just want to encourage you guys that it is a fantastic opportunity. Don't get discouraged. There's going to be challenges along the way. Uh, it's just how do you deal with those challenges? Keep moving forward every day and just think of it this way. Uh, have a long-term plan and think, well, okay, if I start Amazon today and I realistically uh, set my goals and I say, well, I can, you know, I want to make $50,000 a month by my third year or by my fourth year. If you look at that on a uh, linear scale, like, you know, by your third or fourth year, you're making uh, over a half a million dollars a year. And that's only taking you, you know, two or three years or, or four years. So that's the way you got to look at it. Um, are you prepared to put in the work now to, you know, in three to four years time, make half a million dollars a year? It's totally possible with this. You just need a couple of really good products and um, then you're off to the races. So that's the way you got to look at it. Invest in it now, uh, get it running, get it happening. And, and, and it's a long-term business and it's going gonna, it's gonna to pay uh, in many, many years to come. So enjoy the journey. This is my first 30 days and I look forward to doing more updates uh, throughout this, um, throughout my journey. So thanks for watching and please subscribe and don't forget to uh, leave a, a massive thumbs up. If you didn't like it, leave a thumbs down and let me know why. Um, but either way, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Boom!